Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class. We were talking about another reason that we can claim and know that this is the Word of God is by the prophecies that have been fulfilled. And we looked at, you know, certainly prophecies related to our Lord Jesus Christ, the messianic prophecies, and how they were fulfilled. And we talked about the probabilities of just, he just took eight. And the probabilities was astronomical that they just would happen by chance. And we know that the, the Lord, when he was here, he fulfilled hundreds of messianic, uh, mess, messianic prophecies. So it's, it's absolutely just looking at that, there's no doubt, okay, that this is the inspired word of God. There's no way men, and so many different men at different times and in different places, could predict such precise things. And, you know, a lot of them weren't just general things. They were precise things. And we talked about many of those. And we looked at, uh, in the one, you know, one of the ones, if you look at Psalms 22, you know, the description of how the, the Messiah was going to suffer. Mm -hmm. And it's such an absolute picture of the cross. And that was hundreds and hundreds of years before the cross was ever used, yes. before there was a, a, a punishment by death on the cross. That was a Roman invention. Yes. So, you know, things very specific. Uh, we kind of ran out of time. There's a few more of the Old Testament that I wanted to mention because... I don't know about you, but you know, I, I think sometimes about some of this. Yeah, it's wonderful. It fulfilled the prophecies. But then when you stop and really look at it, how specific some of them were and how the Lord fulfilled them, it, it just makes me be encouraged to know that this is the Word of God. Uh, one of the ones we didn't get to that I wanted to mention was uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1 it says it, it says this is what the Lord says to his anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I will take hold and subdue nations before him and, and strip kings of their armor and open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut that's Isaiah 45 1 he goes on and talks about how Cyrus would subdue Babylon. This was about 150 years before Cyrus ever existed. So how would he know the name Cyrus? And that, that name, Cyrus, would become a great conqueror and be able to overcome Babylon. There's no way, Isaiah, 150 years before Cyrus was ever born, to know the name and what he was going to do. You know, things like that. I, get, I almost get goosebumps, uh, goosebumps when I think about things like this. So specific. Okay? So that was one I wanted to, to mention today. Because to me, that's what, when I think about the Old, uh, Old Testament prophecies, that's one, just like... Talking about the cross before the cross was ever invented as, as a means of torturous death. Here is a specific name of a conqueror that was going to come in. And he was going to come in and he says that he's going to uh, open the doors before him and the gates shall not be shut. And you go back and read the story about how he entered Babylon. Babylon was a fortress that couldn't be penetrated. The city of Babylon. Right? It was no way. But God opened the way. So, things like that, again, just show us. Uh, another thing that was mentioned here, Ezekiel, chapter 26. If you go to Ezekiel, chapter 26, the whole chapter is really about the city of Tyre. Now, in Ezekiel, chapter 26, the name is Tyrus. Because he's talking about the king himself, but it's about the city, Tyre. And he predicts several things in that chapter. 
Okay, so if you want to, we can turn there. Ezekiel chapter 26. Now, a couple things he mentions here are not necessarily surprising because I can't find it in Ezekiel chapter 26. He mentions in here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, down in verse uh, 7. Okay? And such saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring unto Tyrus Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and, and a king of kings from the north, and, uh, with horses and chariots. And he goes on and describes how Nebuchadnezzar was going to overthrow the city. With, because Nebuchadnezzar was on the march. So a lot of people say, well, that's not a big deal. So the prophet prophesied a few years before Nebuchadnezzar came there. Well, okay. But let's look at some things. He said down in verse 13, look at that. Uh, get the right chapter here. And I will cause uh, the noise of the songs to cease and something. That's not right. I'm sorry, verse 3. He says, And thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and I will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes his waves. Now he said never Nebuchadnezzar was going to come, which he did, and put seas on the city for 13 years before he destroyed it. But then there's been others that have come. The other notable one that ties into this, these prophecies is Alexander the Great, when he came. Because if we look at this, one of the things that says that the city would be laid bare, down in verse 4, okay? They shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down the towers. I will also uh, uh, scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. That says it was going to be destroyed. And Nebuchadnezzar was known for that. Right? When Nebuchadnezzar entered a country to take over that country, he would destroy the main city and he would level it. Just like he did Jerusalem. Okay, the capital of, of Judea at the time. That was what he did. So again, people say, well, that's no big prophecy. You can see Nebuchadnezzar was, was on his way and he's going to say, yeah, but wait. Okay? He also prophesied there, uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> verse 12, it says, And they shall make a spoil of thy riches, and make a prey of merchandise, and they shall break down thy walls, and destroy thy pleasant houses, and they shall lay thy stones, and thy timbers, and thy dust, in the midst of the water. Okay. Well, remember, Tyre was a, a coastal city. It was right on the coast. Okay, and they were known known for their you know ships. They were merchants. Philippinesians, I think it was called. Now, they, this prophecy says, not only was the city going to be destroyed, but all that rubble. Okay, the stones, the rubble, the, even the dust, dirt, was going to be thrown in the water. Okay, very specific, right? But Nebuchadnezzar didn't do that. But remember, he said there was going to be many nations come against you. Later, that happens. Not with Nebuchadnezzar. He goes on, he says, uh, the, the uh, the city of Tyre will, will be, never be rebuilt. Well, they said, well, yeah, it was. It was built on the island. There was an island out from the city of Tyre. And as Nebuchadnezzar came in, they were taking things from the city over to the island and building a new city. We'll get the importance of that here in a minute. Then he says... Great fear, in verse 16, okay? 
Then shall the princes of the sea, okay, the princes of the other areas, the Philippinesian kingdom, shall come down from their thrones and lay away their robes and put off their uh, uh, broidered garments and shall clothe themselves with trembling. They shall sit upon the ground and shall, you know, shall uh, terribly at every moment and be uh, astonished at thee. So when they see what happens to Tyre, he says the other kings around of these cities are going to just tremble and, and well, let's look at history. This is what's wonderful. This isn't yeah. just what the Bible says and then later you read it somewhere else in the Bible where that was fulfilled. History tells us this was fulfilled. First, Nebuchadnezzar came. He destroyed the city. After 15, uh, 13 years of siege, he destroyed the city and tore it all down. Right. Fulfilling some of these prophecies. Okay? But they found out when they did that, all the riches and everything in the city had been moved to the island. Well, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't, didn't have ships, etc. Couldn't get over to the island. Okay? But he left that city destroyed. Well, that didn't cause the other kings to tremble at that point in time. But he did conquer the city, just as the prophecy said. Okay? He laid it bare, just like the prophecy said. Now, but he said, okay, well, the prophecy also said that Tyre wasn't going to be built again. But it was. Well, okay, we're not done with fulfilling this prophecy. Uh, I forgot. But I think it was 250 years after. 250 years after. So nobody's thinking about this prophecy at that point in time because Nebuchadnezzar already came. So they're done with it, right? And, that, and a lot of scoffers will be saying, well, yeah, that just didn't happen, so that wasn't a true prophecy. No, true prophecies of God always happen mm -hmm. the way God says. But here comes Alexander the Great. The old city of Tyre still rose. Okay, but the new city was over there. Alexander the Great didn't have a bunch of ships with him. But he knew that they were a danger because they had ships. They were a shipping, and that's what their business was. And he was afraid that they would use those against him in other parts of the Mediterranean. So he was bound and determined to destroy Tyre, Tyre again, the island. So what did he do? What did the prophecy say would happen to the rubble, the stones, the ground, etc.? Alexander the Great built a causeway between the mainland and the island by using the rubble from the old city. Those stones, the dust, the ground, etc., he timbers, he started filling in, building a causeway across the to that island. He went over across the island and destroyed the city completely. They said he was so fierce about it, his, history records, that when he then went on to other cities, they were, they were so afraid that they just opened their gates and let him come in. What did we just read about the other kings and other princes? That's exactly what happened. Over and over again. Now, these are things that don't seem important to a lot of people. But if you look at these specific prophecies in chapter 26, God's not in a hurry necessarily to fulfill his prophecies. He prophesied some things that didn't fit at the time. Didn't even fit with the first king that destroyed the city. Okay? But it does, when you look through all of history, over hundreds of years, he fulfilled every single one of them. That causeway, they said, is still there. You can see parts of it. Of course, over time, you know, it's been thousands of years now, it's washed away some of them. You can still see evidence of that causeway. Historical records we're talking about. Not just Bible stories. He said... Now look at, <clears throat> down in verse uh, 
verse 5, let's see, verse 5 says, It shall be a place of spreading of nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord. It shall uh, become a spoil to the nations. So he's saying there, after, if you remember, after the city is destroyed, he said it's going to be a place where the fishermen are going to start putting their nets out. To let them dry, because you have to let your nets dry, or they they do heavy, they rot, and so on. After Alexander the Great destroyed the city, it was never rebuilt, and fishermen started to use it because it was a lot of nice rocks, rubble, to lay out their nets to let them dry, and they still do that today. They say. So you know, think about little. Specific things that God prophesied come to pass. May not be seen on our part specifically in one event, right. but God's faithful to his word. <laughs> that's, that's why I like this example. God is faithful to his word. When he prophesies something, he's not in a hurry to get it done, but it will happen. It will happen exactly the way God says it will. So again, when you look at that and think about it, how in the world could Ezekiel know all these things? Right. Yes, he might have been able to foresee Nebuchadnezzar come because Nebuchadnezzar was conquering nation after nation, and you could see it coming. Now, specific to Tyre, Maybe, maybe not. He might be able to see that. Exactly what was going to happen to Tyre, maybe, maybe not see that. But he might say, oh, he's a good guesser right? about Nebuchadnezzar. But look at how many of these prophecies weren't fulfilled by Nebuchadnezzar, but hundreds of years later were fulfilled by other nations, which he said would happen. Other nations would come. It, it just... To me, that's just amazing when you start thinking about the accuracy of this precious word and how else could it have been done other than God inspired because it's his word. So to me, that's just one more of the prophecies. Now, we could go on and on and on. There's all kinds of them in, in here. Uh, but those were some of the, the ones I really... Uh, mean something to me. So I wanted to share those. Because especially this one in Ezekiel. Because it just shows us. Yeah. You can't just look at one thing and say, well, the prophecy didn't happen. Yeah. Right? Well, the prophecy, in this case, the one event, Nebuchadnezzar coming, fulfilled some of the prophecy. Yeah. Alexander Great, 250 years later, fulfilled the rest of the prophecies. That's why, you know, some of the Jews will say, well... Jesus isn't the Messiah because he didn't fulfill all the prophecies of the Messiahs. Well, some of the prophecies about the Messiah weren't related to his first coming. They're related to his second coming, which will be fulfilled to the letter, to every little jot and tittle, as the Lord himself said, when he comes back again. And I think that's when, <laughs> why... In the, after the rapture, the church is out of here. Jews will start to understand. As the 144,000 go out and start preaching to the Jews, they'll start understanding because they'll start seeing some of the other prophecies being fulfilled. And they'll start understanding that, oh, there was two advents of our Lord. One, when he came as a suffering service to die for our sins, which are clear now to us in the prophecies. And he's going to return as the king of kings. Again, the point is, these prophecies aren't always filled with this one event. You've got to look at all of history. In history, it, like I said, some of these Old Testament prophecies... We don't see and understand the true fulfillment of them. We know as Christians and know the Bible is true that they did. But then they may not have the evidence of it until recent times. Babylon. One of the prophecies 
was that Babylon was going to be destroyed, which it was, okay, and that parts of it would turn into swamp. There's no historical record of that, okay, but in the 1800s they started excavating, the archaeologists started excavating the old city of Babylon. Guess what they found? In certain sections of the they couldn't excavate anymore because it was under the water table. Guess what? It was swampy. Right? Just as the scriptures said, but we don't have a historical record of it until 1800s. The city, the, 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 uh, I'm sorry, I get that. All these facts mixed up. There's another city that was prophesied that it would burn, but there's no historical record of that city ever burning. But again, archaeology Archaeologists, when they started excavating the city, you know, cities oftentimes have layers because they'll be destroyed, they'll rebuild, something will happen, they'll rebuild. Well, they were excavating this city and they got down to a layer and it was all ashes, indicating that the city had burned, just as the scripture said. So, like I said, we don't have to just rely on Bible stories and evidence that prophecies were fulfilled. History, archaeology, evidence, over and over again prove every little thing God said in his word happened. Because it's the word of God. And the word of God is always true. Every dot and fill. Another thing we want to look at real quick before we run out of time it is R.A. Torrey said, okay, these prophecies are wonderful. And it, it, I get excited because we look at that and then look at some of the other, we'll get into statistics again. But the probability of these Old Testament prophecies, okay, uh, that, that same mathematician went on and calculated, you know, he just took 11, okay, of the prophecies about different cities that were fulfilled. And, and you know, again, it was astronomical the probability of that happening. Okay? So, but the other thing he said, besides these specific prophecies, both Old and uh, Testament and Messianic prophecies, there's also a prophecy, what he calls, in types. In other words, the types of the Old Testament, the things like the tabernacle, like the offering, Okay? Like many, many other we go on and on, were all pictures and types yes. of the Lord. And the Lord fulfilled all these types. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 8. Because this is what I believe R.A. Torrey was talking about when he's talking about prophecies and types. In, in chapter 8, Okay, verse 1, he says, Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained uh, to offer gifts and, to, uh, and sacrifices, whereof it is the necessity that this man have somewhat to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer according to the law, who serve an, uh, unto the, the example and shadow of the heavenly things. All those Old Testament, the priesthood, the high priesthood, the sacrifices, the temple itself, all the, the things that went on in the temple, the offering of incense, the offering of the shoe bread, the, the, you know, the labor, the, the washing, the altar itself, they, they all picture Christ. Right? That's what he's saying here. This is the sum now of what's happening. All those were examples and pictures of what's going on in the heavenlies. The true tabernacle. He goes on in, in, over in there in chapter 9. Uh, in, in, in verse uh, 
verse 9, he says, which was the figure of things uh, of, of, of time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that would not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the uh, conscience. He says, those things were all figures, figures of the true, which is Christ. Everything in the Old Testament types were fulfilled in Christ. He goes on in verse 11, says a very similar thing. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. So not of the earthly thing, the heavenly tabernacle. The earthly stuff were just types and pictures, all fulfilled in Christ. Down in verse 20, uh, 23, he says... It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, uh, uh, not uh, with these, but the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than these. The sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he entered, in verse 24, the holy place, not made with hands. The point is, those were all prophecies of our Lord Jesus Christ in type. Okay? They're pictures of Christ. And you go on and on and on. And in chapter 10, he continues on. In uh, chapter 10, verse 1, he says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never have those sacrifices which were offered year by year continually make the comers then perfect. And it goes on and talks about it. Christ is the one, his sacrifice, which all those pictures, all those were a prophetic type. So when he's talking about a prophetic type, that's what he's talking about. Hebrews is full of this. Okay? But I'd like to go back in, in closing here today to John chapter 5. Because Jesus himself told the Jews at the time. They were missing. John chapter 5, verse 39. Okay? Actually, let's, let's uh, back up. Verse 37. He says, The Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me, yea, have... Uh, Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. All of the Old Testament scriptures, beginning to end, are pictures and types of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Jews didn't see it. They missed his first advent, coming as a suffering servant to die for the sins of the world. He said in verse 40, I mentioned this to Pat this morning, I was reading this and it just struck me. How sad verse 40 is. And it describes the world. He says, These scriptures, they all testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. This is the point that our Tory is making with the prophecies of types. And as he mentioned there, they're a little bit harder to, to see and understand. And Hebrews is a good place to start because it yeah. talks about a lot of the, especially the sacrifices yeah. and the tabernacle. But he said, it's, it's a, you, know, you can study all your life and never get to the depths. No. When you start studying the types in the, Old, uh, in the Old Testament and how Christ fulfilled them and how they pictured Christ, he said, it's, it's an endless study. Yeah. But that's the only way you're going to get it. Yeah. Right? It's nice for us to read Hebrews and get kind of the top level of it. And then most of us stop there and say, well, I'm satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> the types all picture Christ. Yeah. But he says, if you really want to understand it, it's a 
lot of study because those types are so beautiful and the Jews missed it. We missed it. So when we think about, just think about those ones we've talked about, and we could go on and on and on, we could go on for weeks and weeks and months maybe, looking at the different prophecies of the Old Testament, how they've been fulfilled, and historically proven that they were fulfilled. But don't forget about the types, the prophecy of the types, all those pictures, Christ fulfilled perfectly. So, that's his second point. Okay, the first point, we can have confidence and know that this is the Word of God based on the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ and how he referred to the Old Testament and the New Testament as the Scriptures. Okay? Then we've looked at now the, the how by looking at prophecies, we can have confidence and know this is the Word of God. Because those prophecies, over and over and over again, mathematically, scientifically, have been proven, couldn't just have happened. Okay? Unless they were fulfillment of God. And God planned them, and God fulfilled them. So next week, we're going to move on to the next thing. And that's, that's kind of the, the continuity of this book. Okay? When you think about the number of author, authors... Over how many of a thousand years, okay, from different countries in many cases, three different languages, okay, indicating different cultural influences at the time, and it all fits together as one book with one theme through it all, and that's Jesus died for our sins. Amen. So we'll pick that up next week. Amen. Thank you for joining us. For God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School Class.